Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Yoon Hai from NS Focus to talk about mitigation bypass, past, present, and future. Yoon Hai. Okay, hello everyone, thanks for coming. My name is Yunhai Zhang, and I'm a researcher of uh, Ernst Focus. Uh, and I also win the mitigation bypass bounty four years in a row since uh, 2015. So let's uh, first uh, review the past of mitigation bypass. Before 2002, just uh, good old days of uh, vulnerability exploit because there's uh, no mitigations at all. So exploiter is just a uh, travel. For stake buffer or wrong, it's just uh, all right the return address in the stack. And for heap buffer or wrong, just uh, overwrite the heap metadata. That's so simple. So once you find a uh, vulnerability, you can achieve arbitrary code execution. That's very simple. So since all the change, there was mitigations. These are the mitigations for stake buffer or run and the uh, mitigations for heap buffer or run. More important, there are general mitigations, that is the SLR and the DEP. These two, as uh, DEP and the SLR together, can make exploit uh, difficult. Then you find uh, an vulnerability, you can't uh, simply achieve arbitrary code execution. You need uh, to do more work to achieve that. That's mitigation bypass. So there are many ways to achieve this, but uh, most uh, popular was first uh, to get with the right parameters from the vulnerability. And then use this read write capability to hijack control flow. As a corrupt the function point or corrupt the return address on the stack, both can lead to arbitrary code execution. That's the very classic mitigation bypass technique here, and uh, it has been used for many years. But uh, when Windows 10 was released, things are changed. First, uh, there are new release strategy. There will be two major updates every year, and uh, new mitigations in each update. In the first uh, release of Windows 10, that is the TH1, we got a uh, CFG. And uh, in TH2, we got a uh, CIG and uh, image load policy. In RS1, we got a uh, ACG and uh, child process policy. And in RS2, we got a uh, CFG strict mode and a CFG export suppression. And finally, in RS3, we got a uh, no low mandatory label image. That's uh, an extension of the image load policy. So let's see these new mitigations. First, uh, the most important mitigation is CFG. Uh, it's very, very simple. Just uh, gather the indirect function call or indirect jump by validate the target. In the compare time, 
it will find the uh, all possible indirect function call target and uh, collect the uh, metadata of these functions. In the runtime, when the processors start, it will be build a bitmap to mark all the valid target. And uh, when new module are loaded, the bitmap, safety bitmap will be updated to mark uh, the functions in that module. Finally, when uh, indirect call, indirect function was called, there will be insert a uh, small code to verify that the target was valid, which was marked from the bitmap. So with CFG, we can't simply corrupt the function pointer because uh, the corrupt target will not be a valid one. So one way was blocked. There was still return address problem. So there's RFG. Uh, due to some reason, RFG was not uh, released now because the uh, current uh, software-based implementation is not uh, secure enough. But uh, there will be a uh, hardware-based uh, implementation. So in, uh, but uh, we don't know many detail of that implementation now. So in this talk, uh, we don't cover this part. We just uh, assume RFG will resolve the return address corruption problem. So both ways are blocked. We can't simply achieve a bit of code execution. We need a new mitigation bypass techniques. There was two category of this uh, techniques. One directly adversary CFG to bypass it. And uh, the other chose an uh, alternative way to achieve rapid code execution. First, uh, first uh, let's see the adversary techniques. The first one is to use uh, the unprotected code. There are many uh, such code. Mm, uh, that is uh, non-CFG modules, JIT generated code, indirect jump, and uh, set jump, long jump, and uh, writable IAT. What this uh, kind of uh, technicals has been submitted to Microsoft, so they are resolved one by one. Non-CFG module was uh, blocked by CFG strict mode. JIT generated code was blocked by CFG OL JIT. Indirect jump was blocked by CFG OL jump. And the side jump, long jump, was blocked by long jump hardening. Finally, um, writable IAT are removed. So in the long run, we can We can consider that uh, there will be no more unprotected code. So that way it was blocked. The other adversary technical was to use uh, valid sensitive functions, such as uh, WinXVC, anti-continue, virtual alloc, virtual protect, heap creator, map view of field, et cetera that will be a very, very long list of such sensitive functions. But there was a generic uh, mitigation ways. That is to use CFG explicit separation that will explicit suppress those sensitive functions. And CFG exporter separation will 
make all export functions not valid packet. Uh, in the long run, we can consider there will be no more valid sensitive functions, but there still will be wrapper functions. Here I list uh, four such wrapper. They are all valid safety target and uh, we are call those sensitive functions in its implementation. And the, the problem is such kind of wrapper function cannot be generic found. So they can only be addressed case by case. When one is reported, one can be resolved. So in the long run, there will, will be such functions, I think. So this is the first problem of current mitigations. OK, let's see the alternative bypass technique. First is to load the library. It's very trivial to call the library to load any library once you build the read-write parameter. Here is a simple JavaScript code that can do this. So with this capability, we can use an UNC pass to load the remote library, which the attacker can fully control. So when this library was loaded, it will get an execution. To address this, there was the no remote image policy of the image load policy, which will prevent a load from the remote path. However, the browser itself will catch catch our page date, which can be used to deliver the library to local. So we can load the malicious library from local. So bypass the no remote image policy. To address this, there was CIG, which prevent load untrusted library. That is to say, only Microsoft designed library can be loaded. But Microsoft designed .NET native image is valid to be loaded. And it contains a RWX section, which you can modify, use the read write parameters. And uh, you can write the shortcode to that section and just uh, execute it. So there are the, the final mitigation, the ACG, which will prevent uh, the creation of the RWX section. If ACG is enabled, when you load such a uh, .NET native image, it will fail to create such a section. But if we, but uh, we when we cannot uh, load uh, such a library to create a WX section, we still can load uh, an older version of NTDLL to call NT continue because the system core ID are different from version to version. The ID in the current system of NT continue is the ID of another function in the older version of NT DLL. And that function can be a valid safety target. So we can just load an older version and call that function. It actually do what NT continue do. So we can use NT continue to achieve RPC code execution. So finally, 
the no low mandatory label image policy will prevent a loader from catch fill because all fill right by the browser will be marked as low level. So it can't be loaded. Uh, with all these mitigations, uh, load library technical will be blocked. So let's see the the last uh, type of mitigation bypass technical that is to abuse the future. I have reported four kind of this technique. The first is to abuse unsafe com object. The second is to abuse JIT compile. The third is to abuse launch IE. And the, the last one is to abuse the shim hook. Let's see one by one. <coughs> For the unsafe com object, uh, the theory is very simple. The COM object uh, is designed to be used uh, in different uh, environment. Some environment uh, allow unsafe COM object, which can do malicious actions such as create a new process. And uh, some environment uh, disallow such as our browsers. But how to how to determine which environment the current the pro process is? It's determined by some flags, so we can use the read write primitive to modify those flags and to remove the restriction. So we can in some in. in we can in the web browser to instantiate those unsafe com object and uh, to create a new process. This uh, is a very very interesting future which can be abused, and uh, many people has used this to get the mitigation bypass bounty. This is just for sure. He got the first uh, top mitigation bypass bounty, and uh, his uh, his tech is uh, just uh, use uh, the unsafe com object, and uh, then uh, Yang Yu, aka Tom Keeper, win the second uh, top mitigation bypass bounty by use the similar tech like uh, James Foshaw's. And then, also it uh, win the third top bounty with uh, just uh, similar techniques. All their techniques are built in IE, and uh, their techniques cannot be used in Microsoft Edge because Microsoft Edge do not uh, support uh, ActiveX. However, <laughs> I have managed to implement their technique in Microsoft Edge just, just by changing some flags and bring ActiveX back to Edge and then use the same technique to achieve a bit of code execution. And I have talked about uh, that technique in the CSS conference. Now let's see the second uh, future can be abused, the, the JD compiler. Uh, this technique I have talked uh, about uh, two, years, uh, two years before in Blue Hat. So I just... Uh, Simply uh, give a simple image to uh, to show. It's uh, very simple. Just uh, find some place to write your shortcode, 
and uh, weight uh, the JIT compiler to make that uh, location executable, and uh, you can run your shortcut from that uh, location. Uh, there are the many mitigations and uh, further bypass in this topic. Uh, since I have talked about it, so I won't uh, talk the detail this time. And uh, one more thing, uh, the OOPGIT process uh, mitigation, uh, technical kind of mitigation in this attack, uh, Ivan Franks has uh, talked uh, about uh, that. You can, you can refer that talk for the detail. So let's see the third future can be abused. Mm, in Microsoft uh, Edge, there was a feature called the Launch IE. That is uh, when you browse uh, a website which is not uh, compatible with uh, Edge, it will show this. And uh, you can click the button to Launch IE to view that page. So in the internal, it's uh, just a simple JavaScript function call. But uh, when you call this function in your web page, you will get uh, an error, the permission denied. This is because uh, that function will check the URL which causes the function. So we can simply just uh, rewrite the URL in the memory, and uh, you can launch IE to view any URL. And uh, since IE is not as secure as Edge, there was many exist way to achieve a bit of code execution. So you can finally execute uh, any code. So let's see the last future can be abused, that is the shim hook. Ishim's dot DIL will hook particular functions by modifying the IAT. This is a very powerful feature because it can modify the read-only date. You can see this code snippet. It will check the protection of the target memory and make that uh, location writable, modify it, and uh, revert it to the previous protection. So if we can abuse this feature, we can execute uh, any code because you can modify, the, modify any code page to write your shell code. How, how the shim hook uh, do the hook? It was guided by some metadata stored in the SP bindings structure. So you can just uh, modify that structure to let uh, the issues modify any data for you, including the read-only areas, and then achieve a bit of code execution. So we can we can see for the future abusing techniques, there is not a generic mitigation way. It can only be resolved case by case. So this is the second program of the current mitigation. Okay, let's see the future of mitigations. First, as I has talked uh, that there will be the Intel CET based uh, RFG. This is a uh, hardware based uh, RFG. Mm. Since this uh, mitigation is not released yet, we don't uh, know much detail, so I will not uh, talk uh, much about that. And uh, the other the other thing is there will be fine-grade CFG. 
many problem of the current uh, safety implementation is just because it is uh, only cross grid uh, CFI. So when there are fine grid uh, CFG, many current uh, buffer techniques cannot be used. However, even there was fine grid CFG, control flow still can be hijacked, I think. Because uh, nowadays, non-travel applications are very complicated. So there will always be indirect cause that has multiple valid target exists. And uh, some targets are not uh, are actually not uh, allowed because of logical reason that cannot uh, be detected by the assembly level. So if you modify the function point to that logic not allow target, you can still hijack the control flow and uh, do some malicious things. And uh, Another, another way of medication bypass is to use existing CFG bypass techniques. You can see this in the medication bypass bounty page. There are so many out of scope kind of technique. It's a long list. Many of these technical still can be used in the future, even there was fine grid CFG. And the last important thing is current, uh, current medications has too many critical data protected by read only, such as the guard dispatch I call FPTR, the IIT, the NTUSP function pointer, and the the WW64 APC routines. All these all this, uh, important things are only protected by read only, which could uh, be modified to writable and uh, then corrupt. So, if we can ab abuse some future to modify the read only data, we can fully bypass the CFG and achieve arbitrary code execution. And uh, in the end, there was still future abusing. There's uh, at least uh, some possible way, such as the donut or PowerShell the, uh, to abuse delay load library to abuse out of process technical and uh, extension. All these are powerful future, which can do powerful things. So if they are abused, they can potentially be used to bypass mitigations. So in the end, I think there was no silver bullet uh, no easy way to generate mitigation or the exploit uh, technicals. Uh, the, our defender need to work hard to resolve all this case by case and uh, keep, keep working hard to resolve all the new emerging bypass technicals. So, that's all. Any questions? <laughs>